best filament storage for less than $10. I know. You might say, Grant, this thing looks cheap. That's because it is. Let's talk about it. I know, sensationalized title, best filament storage for under 10 bucks that you can buy in the store. I feel like you could maybe make one that is cheaper than this at your home. But in my opinion, the IKEA Vesken is one of the cheapest solutions to store a fair bit of filament in a very small amount of area. A lot of you all may know that we have a fair bit of filament. You can actually see it behind me during all of our seated set content. There's a big industrial shelf. The problem with that industrial shelf though is that if it goes any more than one roll deep, I can't get to it, right? Well, this kind of solves the problem. This is actually some sort of bathroom tool. Uh, you can see it's got holes in it and it's designed by David Wall. Thanks for that. And I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Ben. His wife runs Tiffy's Lemonade Stand. And uh, yeah, they make pretty awesome products. So if you want to go check them out, we'll have links to them in the description. But this was Ben's idea. At least that's who I saw it from. And I said, good lordy, I got to get me some of these. Now, when we first found out about this, these were eight bucks a piece, but they've now gone up to $9.99. Still less than $10, le less tax. But these things are pretty great. We're going to get this thing open. We're going to get it assembled. Then we're going to show you how much filament these can actually hold. I will say... The hardest thing about this is dealing with my segue to our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. If you want to get your ideas out of your head and into your hands with full art to part, rapid prototyping, and product development, basically, you want to make really cool stuff, you can reach out to us, 3D Musketeers. Links will be down in that description. And if you want to support what we do here and join our super secret Discord community, you can head over to patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers and take a look at all the tiers that we have hanging out all the way from $1 and, well, it goes all the way to the moon. But anyways, you're not here to listen to me do self-promotions, but I would like it if you leave a like and hit that subscribe button. That does help us grow as Content creators, it's still weird to call myself that. Anyways, let's, let's dive into this Veskin. So before the segue, actually the hardest thing about this is dealing with the sticker. There is a sticker that goes all the way around it that makes it a real pain in the butt to work on. So we gotta peel off the sticker and it is satisfyingly loud. The Veskin. All right. You're done. We are left with three bins. Top one is completely empty. The other two have the legs, the feet, and the wheels and the top. It does come with some instructions. We don't need those where we're going. Also, I might have already done one of these. So have an idea of what I'm doing here. We got to go ahead and get these bags open though. What are these bags made out of? Low density polyethylene, recyclable. Nice. The wheels. And the uprights. It's just more fun to do it with a sharp knife. All right, let's cue that time lapse and let's get this thing built. And there you have it, the IKEA Vesken totally built. Yes, they're kind of jank. What is this made out of? Polypropylene um, dash C. It's not carbon filled. 
Now it's polypropylene plastic, so reasonably biodegradable. I do like that it does have the holes in it for ventilation. Um, not that the spools really need it, but I guess we should go get some spools. And, uh, well, we got the one. I Rachel raid this. I already had one done. So, let's go get him. And to give you an idea, these things weigh like maybe two pounds. So, even my hurt back can easily pick these things up. So, yeah. Let's go fill these up. What you are looking at is 24 kilogram spools, although they're of course not full, of PLA. Some of which is the Polyalchemy Elixir that we unboxed in a recent video. I think we posted that one. If not, it's a future video. And if it is, we'll card to it. If there's a card, we did it. I don't remember if we unboxed that stuff on a video or not. Or if we ever posted that video. But... For our particular purpose, I cannot use these top shelves. If your shelves are tall enough, you could actually do all three of these with filament. However, ours are only about 30 inches. We'll put whatever that is in centimeters next to me. And this is about 27 and three quarter inches. Again, metric next to me from the ground. So this top shelf, we're going to end up putting in tools, spare parts, extra hot ends, that kind of stuff. And the two bottom shelves are where we're going to put filament. Now you might be saying, Grant, spools don't fit in here. How am I going to fit all of those on here? Ah, sideways. Something to note, 3D printer spools are roughly eight inches in diameter or 200 millimeters. And if you're shelving, is divisible by eight, you must buy one less of these than your shelving can handle because otherwise they'll be hitting each other as you pull the things in and out. And I'm not about that life. The one downside to this, and once my back is fixed, we're going to do a DIY project where we build one similar to this, but way better out of wood. But one downside is you cannot put spools in boxes because they'll fall over easily. So you can use spools that are still vacuum sealed though. Just put it in there. And that little bit of extra wiggle room we're gonna have will help out. So let's get this thing loaded. Something to note, on average, you're gonna be able to fit six to seven spools per shelf. With these thinner polyalchemy spools, we can definitely fit a seventh spool on this shelf. But if we look at, these larger spools, also Brad's Orange. Get yourself some of that at Printed Solid. Links will be in the description down below. With bigger spools, six is what you get. But that's 12 spools in a space that is really only one spool wide. And here's where it gets interesting. Our shelves can hold six spools tall. Well, unless I want to be fumbling around with what's what, I only have to put them one deep, or I only can put them one deep. This stops that from ever being a problem. And yes, it's on wheels, so it can do the electric slide. It's electric. And there you have it. 24 spools in the space of, well, for me, 12. We are doubling our capacity to hold spools and we get little bins up here as well. Now this will sit a fair bit below our actual shelves. So we might end up putting some lighting in there so when we pull out the spools, we'll easily be able to see what we're looking at. But this is going to immensely clear up the clutter in my office. And actually, right here on the screen is gonna be a before and an after photo so you guys can see how this looks when it's done. Now mind you, the lighting isn't installed yet. That'll be a future project, but this to me is really the cheapest way to store filament. And if you don't have shelves, maybe you just have a thin closet, you can put six more up on the top here and be able to handle 18 spools per shelf. Now, I don't know about you, but even at 12, that is less than a dollar per spool to actually store them. And that is pretty darn good. The one downside, the one thing that, that bothers me right now is there's no way to know what's on the spools. So unless you're able to look at it from an angle or something like that, you're going to have to guess. My plan is currently we're going to put a little bit of like white duct tape and just kind of write on it. But eventually we're going to likely transition to QR codes or 
have a spreadsheet that tells us what every spool is. That way we kind of know what we have in our inventory as well. But this is a really awesome way to store spools. I think it's probably one of the cheapest ways out there to do it in a space efficient manner. Because not everyone has tons of space. I certainly don't. My entire office is less than 200 square feet. And we have over 20 printers in there alone. Almost 30, actually. Again, let me know your thoughts down in those comments below. What do you think of the IKEA Vesken filament storage system? Of course, it's not made for that, but, you know... If we did everything the way the manufacturers told us, would we really be in this industry? Just ask yourself that. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down below. And again, I want to give a massive thank you to my buddy, Ben. We'll link to his Twitter as well as to Tiffy's Laminade Stand, a wonderful company that makes some pretty awesome stuff, all made by makers right here in the United States of America. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe out there, don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Oh, Miss Amber, your presence is requested to help move the heavy things, because you are the brains, the beauty, and the bronze. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you love cheap storage solutions, let me know down in those comments. And if you got a better solution, I'd love to know because we would absolutely love to try it. Right below me is going to be our entire 3D printer maintenance series because let's be real, if you're trying to store filament more efficiently, it's probably time to maintain your printers. And right next to that is going to be an unboxing of some spools. Don't know what, maybe we'll change it throughout the time, but it'll be some unboxings of filaments. Probably these ones, the Polyalchemy Elixir. I'll see you guys in the next one, and of course, down in those comments, take care.